this sort of random Photoshop picture of me and a cat. <laughs> um, so the good thing is, is that I don't really have to pretend to be all serious and professional because, you know, you've seen a picture of me in a cat suit. It's all right, asking what our money is. I'm not going to agree. So um, my talk is slightly different, I guess, because I'm talking about a thing. Um, this is one example of it. Um, I'm talking about portable GIS. Uh, and as, as the slide says, it's a brief introduction. So, uh, once upon a time, back in 2006, which uh, in open source geospatial terms is like the Stone Age, um, if you were a beginner, as I was, and you were using Windows, it was pretty much impossible, quite frankly. Um, you had to use the command line to do anything. Uh, you know, if you managed to get through the installation process and the configuration program, you still had to use the blue command line to download and use the things. You know, QGIS at the time was four years old, but it wasn't that commonly used, to be honest. The most common open source desktop GIS was Grass GIS, which is great, but it looks like this. Um, and if you're a Windows user, that's kind of not really what you're expecting, to be honest. And to have got to that stage, you have battled your way through many command lines, many error messages, and you know, I'm not going to say anymore. Apparently, I'm also not going to be able to move slides. So, this is a screenshot from a talk I did in 2007 at the Fossil G conference in Lausanne, Switzerland. Um, and when I looked at this earlier on, kind of had a little bit of an ironic, slightly depressed chuckle because it's still, I think, very much the case for open source GIS. Beginners do need help. Not everybody has the time to learn and install Linux, and yet some of the tools, that seems to be a prerequisite. The learning curve is still steep, um, and the mailing list can occasionally still be quite intimidating. So, I'm not a programmer. I certainly wasn't a programmer in 2006-2007. I wanted to be able to help people and I wanted to be able to contribute something to the open source GIS infrastructure. So I conceived the idea of portable GIS. The idea being basically to make the whole process much easier for new Windows users like myself. So portable GIS. Now, if, if I was using a Windows machine, I would have tried one of those kind of seat and pants demos of it, but um, I'm not going to be able to, so you're just going to have to kind of sit through a few slides and miss the demo bit. What it is, it's an entirely self-contained set of all common open source GIS packages that you might need. So um, there's a rundown of, of, of what the, the, the packages that are on there later. All designed to run from a USB stick. Um, it's installed using a single installer file, so basically once you download it and you install it on the USB stick, don't need to do any additional configuration or setup. I stuck some Ordnance Survey Open Data on there, I have no idea if I'm contravening licenses doing that, so it's you can whatever. Um, and um, I stuck a little control panel on for, to make it really easy to access all the components because you know, trying to make it easy for people, you don't really want them to have to go and kind of messing around in, in, in files to try and find the, the executables and stuff. So what it isn't is the bootable drive. This is not like a live DVD or a live USB. Um, it's designed to fulfill a different purpose, I think. Um, I'm a huge fan of the OSGO live DVD and, and uh, live USB. Um, images. They're fantastic, brilliant, but they're also a bit of a sandbox. You know, once you kind of, well, obviously, if they're a live DVD, once you reboot the machine, your work's gone. So, you know, that wasn't really what I was kind of aiming for. It's also not cross platform. Um, if you're a Linux user, I think you're pretty much capable of doing this kind of thing yourself. Um, your Mac users are kind of on your own, I'm afraid I don't even know where to begin. Um, it's not compatible with portable portable apps.com. Now I get asked about this a lot. Um, 
the reason that it's not compatible with the sort of formats that they use is that um, they do they seem to do a bit of messing around with the files to actually get them to get them into their, their required format. And I always aimed with Portable GIS that once the end user had kind of downloaded it and installed it, if they wanted to upgrade QGIS or something, they could do that without the whole thing breaking. I'm not sure I've ever really managed to fulfill that. Um, but that was that was always my aim. So no, it's not compatible with portable apps. It's also not very small. Um, now I did this talk about two weeks ago, and at the time um, I hadn't released the current, the, the brand new version of this, and I had to change the slide because it used to say current installation is 400 megabytes download and requires two gigabytes of install of space for the actual install. Um, <laughs> The new version turns out to be even bigger and requires 750 megabytes of download and takes, as I say, about 2.6 gigabytes. Now, the reason for that is basically it's just it's all of the packages. I can't, you know, that's how much space they take up. There's not really a lot I can do to kind of get around that. It's also not a stealth system. I'm not trying to basically come up with something that leaves no trace on the operating system, you know, it's not Ninja, it's not anything like that, it's, you know, no doubt there are registry entries there, you know, there are 10 files, I'm not, you know, if you're doing something you need to feel guilty about, that's your problem, but, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to help you. So, there are loads of potential uses for this. Um, some examples that people have given are anywhere where you need to rapidly deploy lots and lots of kind of laptops full of software. Um, it gets used quite a lot, apparently, um, for education and workshops and things like that. And a lot of people tell me that they just like to use it because it means that at the end of the day, if they want to take what they're doing home with them and work on it at home, because God forbid, you know, we all end up doing that sometimes, um, that they can do that. So it's what software does it actually contain? Well, that's the most that's the the, the current setup. Um, at one stage I used to have a lot of different packages on there. I used to have different uh, desktop GIS packages like GVC um, and a whole bunch of, of kind of other small utilities. But as the size of the download got bigger, I had to start reducing what I included and I thought in, at the end. These uh, ignore the kind of PDF reader and all that nonsense, but you know, QGIS, Map Server, PostGIS, PostgreSQL, those are the, the big daddies, those are the ones that most people are using. If you're interested, you can download the executable from my website, should you so desire. Um, so, as I say, I did this talk two weeks ago, and uh, it's kind of cool to be able to say that since then, I've had a long weekend stuck at home, and uh, during that time I upgraded it to um, the latest version of PostgreSQL, PostGIS, and also the latest version of QGIS, so that's cool. Um, so long term, it, you know, it would be really cool to kind of host this on GitHub or something. Um, that would require me doing something very clever to download binaries. Um, GitHub isn't really suitable. For, for, for hosting really large binaries. Um, I'd love to reduce the size of the download somehow. Uh, except no, actually, that's kind of not what I'm interested in at all. Um, what I really, really want is for it to be useful. You know, all that code polishing nonsense and GitHub hosting, that's absolutely fine and dandy, but I'm far more interested in it being used for genuinely good stuff. Um, I got this tweet from a colleague of mine um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is somebody who works for Map Action, and this is him deploying huge, uh, um, portable GIS on machines in the, uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I almost cried when I saw that. And I got another one the other day, which is kind of, you know, that's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to solve problems for people, I'm trying to make people's lives much easier. 
this is why I'm doing it, not to host on GitHub or, you know, polish the code. So, basically, if you find it useful, go ahead, use it. And I kind of, you know, back in the day, you used to see postcardware. Does anyone remember kind of downloading software and seeing postcardware? I kind of thought about doing that again, because it would be really nice to kind of get some postcards from people. But then you've got to worry about random people showing up house and sending nonsense through the post and I just thought it would be far too traumatic for the person to say that. Virtual postcards are fine. If anyone has any ideas about code polishing and GitHub bits and nonsense, then uh, you know by all means get in touch, that would be great. I'll be a very happy <laughs> But otherwise thank you very much. That's possibly the quickest talk I've ever done. Thank you.